Right, welcome back to our series of videos on less is more, a, a very simple and doable method to get rid of obesity, prediabetes, diabetes, and all the inflammatory diseases caused by an overload of sugar. Uh, we're, on, we're on intermittent fasting, so let's, let's first start. L of less stands for low-carb, high-fat diet. Low-carb, high-fat diet. Remember to switch off your GPS. Um, then the E stands for eating window, squashing up your eating window in the form of intermittent fasting. The other E stands for uh, exercise and the role that that plays overrated, but exercise is important. And then, of course, stress and sleep. Uh, we will cover all those, but we're on eating window, squashing up your eating window, intermittent fasting. Right, now a little bit of a history to this little lot is that in, in for millennia, for, for, for as long as we can remember, all the religions of the world actually knew that there was something special about withdrawing food. Because there must be something going on there because everybody seemed to be sharper, seemed to be able to make decisions and seemed to be healthier and stronger because of it. So, uh, so we get it in the Christian religion where, uh, where if you need to make a decision that says you must fast on that decision. And, uh, and fasting in some way makes you a little bit sharper to get to, to better insights. Uh, Ramadan, of course, of the Muslims, is a whole month they devote to uh, withholding food and fasting so that they can be stronger, healthier and sharper. And, um, and, uh, and more devout. And, uh, and then even the Siddhartha Gautama, the, 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 the Buddha, um, when he left his, his, his life of opulence in, 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 the, in, the, in the village and, and saw all the suffering and, and just couldn't take it, and he, and he just, just went and sat under a tree, under a fig tree, in fact, and he, uh, and he fasted for 40 days and came to incredible insights into how to handle suffering and how we should be behaving. So uh, fasting has always been with us. We weren't sure why, and, um, uh, but we knew there was something special going on there. So uh, in the 60s, in the 1960s, when every, we're, we're the age of, of, of enlightenment, the modern age of enlightenment, when we were starting to put a man on the moon and do all sorts of interesting stuff after the, after the wars, um, one of the things that they were doing is, is doing an experiment to see what's the difference between, between fasting and starving on your metabolism. And uh, just to recap, fasting, black bitter coffee, black bitter tea, water, that's it. Nothing more than that. Um, um, then um, starving is having lots of food, but just less than you need. In other words, cutting down on the amount that you need, less than you need, especially if it's a high carb thing that you're doing. Uh, all that that does is it just it just messes with your metabolism and and overloads your your body with sugars. So. Um, uh, Starving is not the way to go. Fasting is the way to go. Right, so in the 1960s, they did an experiment to sort of find out, draw the bloods, see what's happening metabolically. And, uh, and there was a chap uh, uh, from Scotland who worked in his dad's fish and chip shop. So you can just imagine that he, he, had, a, he had a staple diet of deep fried potatoes and, uh, and uh, uh, battered um, it sounds terrible, but uh, fish in a batter, uh, uh, deep fried. Now, this is just carbo, carb, carbohydrate overdose. Uh, and he had this over many years until he eventually, he was over 300, kilogr 300 pounds, 350 pounds. And, uh, and uh, he met a doctor in his shop and the doctor said, well, you know, we're doing this experiment, you know, why don't you come along and see if you like it? And he said, no, sure, I'll sign up. And, uh, and he went and they said, okay, let's do fasting on you and see what happens. Uh, now, their, their form of fasting was black bitter coffee, black bitter tea, water and a multivite per day. That's it. It's all they had. Nothing else. No food. And he said, okay, we'll give it a bash. And uh, there they go. And after a week, uh, they said to him, are you okay? We've done our tests. We've got our, we've got our, uh, our bloods and we, we're, all, we're all fine. Uh, and, and Angus said, yeah, I'm fine. I think we'll carry on a little bit. Let's, let's, see how, let's see where this leads us. Because I'm feeling strong. I'm feeling healthy. I'm feeling fine. And, uh, and he went for another week. Black bit of coffee, black bit of tea, water and a multivite. And he said, well, I'll carry on some more. Now, I'll give you, uh, you, 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 you hazard a guess as to how long Angus held on to this 
fasting state. 382 days, longer than a year. Black bit of coffee, black bit of tea, water, and a multivite. That's it. He was checked, though, uh, and, 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 uh, and all the bloods were drawn, and everything was done, and he was normal. There was nothing wrong. There was nothing wrong with him. And he lost in excess of 250 pounds, right down to a 160-pound uh, handsome young man, um, more or less 80-kilogram young, handsome young man, and he said, okay, that's me. I'm out of here. Well done. And, uh, and he went on uh, to marry a young lady and have two children, two sons, and, and live a happily, happy life ever after. What a, what a success story. What an incredible story. Now, that hasn't been done again because people are scared that they're going to uh, do it wrong and, and eat little bits in between because that's where the problem comes in. But fasting doesn't kill you. Fasting makes you stronger, as is proven by this guy and was proven in the 60s by those experiments. So, what happens, again, what happens when you fast? When you fast for longer than 12 hours, which makes sense because paleo man slept for 12 hours after he danced naked around a fire and ate too much. At that, at that point, he woke up. He had no fridge to go to, no GMO uh, um, banana to eat, no low-fat yogurt to eat. He had to go and hunt together again. He had to get food for that next evening. So basically, for that, adrenaline needs to go up. So adrenaline goes up at 12 hours of fasting. What's the next thing goes up? Your metabolism goes up. But you, you start being able to do your thing. And the third thing is growth hormone goes up. Now, growth hormone going up is a good thing because it's the repair hormone. So you've got adrenaline, you've got a high metabolism, and you've got your growth hormone doing its thing. For this, you need energy because all the glucose is gone. Glucagon then kicks in. This is your, your hormone that basically creates, whether through a process of glyconeogenesis, it makes glucose out of something that's not a carbohydrate. So it basically goes and fetches stored carbohydrates, stored glucose. And where do you store your glucose? Remember that? When there's, too much ins when there's too much glucose and the insulin has done this deed, the second function of insulin was puts it in the muscles, puts it in the liver, and puts it on the bum and on the belly peripherally uh, to store it for the next day, which is the right thing because the next day you get up and you need, you need glucose. And glucagon through glyconeogenesis creates that glucose that you need to do your thing, to go and hunt together for the next day. And uh, um, that's the analogy is your fridge is the muscles, your pantry is your liver, and your peripheral fat is your deep freeze, all of those. So it taps into all of those, cleans them out, uses them as glucose so that you can A, either run away from the lion when he chases you, or run off to the boar to go and get him for tonight's feast. So, uh, so that's, the, that's where the, what, the metabol what, the, what the metabolic situation in your body is at 12 hours. So what you need to do is you need to tap into that. The last thing you need to do is to switch it off every time by having a little carb, by having a little carbohydrate. You need to stretch it. So let's go. 12, uh, 8 o'clock tonight is when you've eaten for the last time. Let's call it 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock in the evening, you have your big meal and you've finished eating. Then you have nothing but black bitter coffee, black bitter tea or water through the night, which is easy because you're sleeping. So it shouldn't be a problem. 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, you've had 12 hours of fasting. At 8 o'clock that morning, your metabolism starts going, uh oh, we need to prepare to hunt together for the day because that's how it's been for 90 to 190,000 years in your, in your evolution. It kicks in. Adrenaline goes up, metabolism goes up, growth hormone goes up, there's no glucose, so glyconeogenesis from the, because the glucose is gone, glucagon goes up, goes and fetches it in the stores. What a pleasure, cleans out the stores and you've got enough. What do we do at eight o'clock? We go to the fridge. GMO banana, low fat yogurt, muesli, what a mess. So we switch off that beautiful system and we let Insulin kick in. Insulin has to take this bolus of glucose, put it in the cells, da da da, bombard the cells again, 
get the cell open, do its thing, and the excess, what does it do? It goes and puts it in the muscle, puts it in the liver, and puts it peripherally on the bum and the belly. Um, and you keep doing that day in and day out. Bad situation. So what we need to do is we need to stretch that. Try and, try and tap into that beautiful me metabolic state that you get at 12 hours. That beautiful metabolic state lasts. It lasted for Angus uh, uh, Barbary, it uh, lasted for 382 days, and he decided to stop it. So you can tap into that for as long as you like. Initially, though, my opinion, the best way to go is to, is to just stretch it till lunchtime. Stretch it till 12, which means it's an extra four hours. So you're tapping for four hours. You're busy cleaning out the fridge. You're busy cleaning out the pantry. You're even going to clean out the, uh, the deep freeze, your, your peripheral fat, and, uh, and use that as energy. Then only eat at 12 o'clock. So in other words, you have a 16-8, 16, 16 hours of fasting and 8 hours of eating window. We call that the eating window. So in other words, we've squashed up our eating window to only 8 hours. So don't eat outside of your eating window. And when you're in your eating window, you've got to, of course, low carb, high fat, LCHF, switch off your GPS, do your veggies, do your saturated fats, and so on. So, if you, in the beginning, so this is an easy way to kick into that. Skip breakfast. If it's easier for you, then skip dinner. But you must stretch your fasting window for longer than 12 hours. What we do in the modern times is we say, you even eat more than three times a day. You eat breakfast, you eat lunch, you eat supper, you have a high tea at 3 o'clock, and you have a little a snack at, at 10 o'clock with your tea. So, so we just, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. And then at night, you get a snack attack at 12 o'clock at night, ah, hands in the fridge, and there you go. So, so this foraging situation that we've sort of allowed ourselves to get into is crazy behavior. Don't do that, because you're switching off the beautiful metabolic systems. You're crowding your body with, with uh, excess sugar uh, that goes and creates inflammatory diseases and obesity. Obesity, of course, and uh, uh, pre-diabetes and diabetes eventually. So, so what a pleasure. 16-8, that's the way to go in the beginning. Now, just, some, just even, if, even, if you, even if you don't do it for any other reason, there's massive economic implications to doing it this way. One, I'm saying that you must have 30 less meals in a month. You now eat 90 meals a month. That's if you don't do all the snacking. 90 meals a month. I'm saying you should have only 60 meals a month. So you must 30 meals you don't have to do. That's a massive economic gain. Secondly, it doesn't cost you anything. You don't need a gym membership. You don't need a personal trainer. You don't need uh, a fancy shakes and protein shakes and amino acid shakes and this shake and that shake. You don't need any of that. Just keep to natural good food, squash up your eating window, try and tap in to the beauties of fasting beyond 12 hours. So um, we now understand the physiology of that. What a pleasure. So, so this is now not us thinking it anymore. It's we starting to know that this is the way to go. So uh, join me in my next video when we will take it beyond intermittent, beyond 16-8 and push it to OMAD and even beyond that. OMAD being eating one meal a day because that's actually where the good benefits lie. But kick off with 16-8, not a problem, but we want to get to OMAD and beyond.